welcome to Witch Talk, the show for millennial witches that moves past the echo chamber of discourse and into the real, raw lives of those who practice. Now, without further ado, here's your host, me. Hello, everybody. My name is Sean Engel, and happy Libra full moon. I am sitting here with Lauren Ash, professional astrologer who is incredible on TikTok. Hello. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. Happy Libra full moon, everyone. I'm so happy to have you. I start off every show by asking, what is your sun, moon, rising? And yes. your OG witch inspiration. Yes. So I have a Cancer Sun, I have a Gemini Moon, and a Leo Rising, if you couldn't tell by the hair. And my OG witch inspiration was my friend Sam's older sister. So I got into astrology because my friend from seventh grade and I have the same birthday. And she had a spooky older sister who was into the occult. And it's just uh, downhill from there. I love that. Oh, everybody yeah. needs a big sister, which I feel like actually you've been taking on that role a lot in the TikTok community, you know, like. Thank you. I love, that's such an honor for me. I, I will take that. Yeah. I feel like people come to you a lot for their archetypes and the way that you explain it is so down to earth and like it's less archetypal, which people get really, really confused by. And it's also extremely accurate. Like, you know what you're talking about. Thank you. Yeah, I think the thing that I love about astrology that also like gets confusing at the beginning is it's not just the signs, it's a, it's religion, hey. it's history, hey. it's actual astronomy, it's mythology. And so you really have to kind of pull from a, a bunch of different places and kind of find your own style. And so I think that's where people get really caught up. Like, where am I? Where do I need to make my own decision on how I read a chart or how I communicate this? And I think that's also what makes going to different astrologers so great is everyone has such a different perspective. Yeah, I, I mean, any kind of like astrologer, tarot reader, you are going to have your own styles because you also have your own influence and your own personality that you're pulling from. And I think that's what makes it great. <laughs> yeah, and it's what keeps it so interesting as a student is like you can go to so many different creators and learn different things from different people and just always find the information you're looking for and you can find someone who knows how to communicate it in a way that you understand. Yeah, which is why I always read multiple horoscopes. Yes. I used to tell myself it was because I was trying to look for the right answer, but I do just like the different vibes. <laughs> See, and I'm a Gemini moon, so I'm always looking at the Gemini horoscope too. So today's a Libra full moon. Where does Libra fall in your chart? Let me pull up my chart actually, because I recently... <laughs> This is a warning to the masses. A uh, parent gave birth to you via C-section. Make sure the birth time they give you is not the time you were supposed to be delivered, like your scheduled delivery time. Make sure it's your actual birth time. Because a while ago, I found out that my birth time was wrong and it didn't change too much. Uh, Libra is still in my third house. So that's fun. But it, it did change one of my Leo placements from the first house to the 12th. That shook me up a little. <laughs> but as a professional astrologer, it's got to be right. <laughs> well, and the thing is, like, I asked my mom and she told me the time. So I was like, the woman knows she, she gave birth to me and it's not on my certificate. So then it was one of those things where she was like, oh, I didn't tell you that. And I was like, no, you didn't. <laughs> Like livelihood mom. <laughs> yeah. That's why I encourage people to like really keep learning and studying because you never know what you might have learned wrong or what your parent might have told you that wasn't accurate. So and the difference between the 12th house and the first house is real. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. <laughs> so okay, you have Libra in your third house. So I gel with you a bit on this because I have a Libra Mercury. How do you think it influences the way you communicate? Uh, I think it really definitely impacts my Gemini moon because my Gemini moon is in the 11th house. And so it's one of those things where I really like to get everyone's opinion. I really like to hear everyone's perspective. And I think the Libra is the bit of the people pleaser in my chart. I think sometimes I might try to be a, a mediator as opposed to like really saying how I feel, which is great in certain situations, but definitely struggle with a bit of those people pleasing tendencies sometimes, don't we all? But um, I really think it helps me keep an open mind and like really try to meet people where they're at and like understand how to shift my communication to kind of help each other understand if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think that's one of the like unsung traits of Libra anyways, is that 
it's not that they can't make up their mind. It's that they're trying to find the best possible outcome. Yes. I think people really forget that Libra is a cardinal sign. Fucking ass up and so work. I think that they focus too much on the wishy-washy aspect of Libra and they forget that um, that wishy-washiness is actually trying to balance all these different challenges that come with leadership. And uh, they're not quite as like attention or glory seeking as other signs. So it's easy to forget, like they have natural leadership instinct and they're very good at building things that last. The seventh house is also really influenced with like long-term partnerships, situations, projects, things that take a while to build. So age into their skills well, I think. I agree completely. I love Libra energy because it always seems very like soft and light and uh, charming, but there is that underlying badassness. Oh yeah. That They'd I really always rather enjoy. be pleasant, but they will cut yeah. you if they need to. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, we're both water signs, so we know that energy yes. very well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little more, I'll stab you in the front. So <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think as far as like the Scorpio archetype, they're definitely a stab in the front situation too. It's not, <laughs> we're not sneaking around. We don't want that done to us. So we would never do it to anyone else. <laughs> yes. It's like if Scorpios are sneaking around, it's to get dirt about you to use later. But if they're getting revenge, they want you to know that they did it. <laughs> yep. Fully, fully. I want the it. credit. <laughs> wow. I honestly, like every time I talk about Scorpio, I'm just like, there's so many red flags here. <laughs> So did you have any Libra influences growing up? Did you have any friends that were Libras or like, my mom's a Libra, which is why I am. I tend to find myself drawn to air moons in general. So I have a few uh, Libra moons through my friend groups. It's just something about my husband's an Aquarius moon, a lot of Gemini moons. So I think the thing that's so appealing about Libra, and it's something that is really influenced by my like fire and air heavy chart is like you mentioned earlier, they're very pleasant. They're easy Woo! to get along with. Yeah. And they're just really good at connecting people and kind of being this positive energy. And so like my air moon loves that and it just gravitates towards those, those sort of personalities. Yeah. It's like same, same, but different. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like we're the people you want to come to at a party. Like I'm a Scorpio moon. No one wants to be around me. At a party. <laughs> but <laughs> air sign moons, fire moons, like those are Woo! the party girls. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we are going to talk more Libra stuff. Do you like crystals? Do you like to f*** them? Well, if you're anything like this, triple Scorpio, your answers are yes and hell yes. And that's why I'm here to talk to you about Chakrubs, the world's first crystal sex toy company. Chakrubs has a variety of product types and healing styles and they are non-porous and non-toxic, so you can feel free to insert without worry, just like me. So head on over to shockropes.com and enter code WITCHYWISDOM for 15% off of your order. Happy healing. Do you like to smoke weed? I know I do, but I also don't like to leave the comfort of my home. That's why Witchy Wisdoms and Witch Talk has partnered with Ease.com so you can place your order directly from the comfort of your couch and receive it within the hour. Ease has daily promos and a variety of strain selection, so you're never going to get bored with what they have to offer. And if you live in my hometown of Los Angeles or anywhere else in the California or Michigan area, you can download Ease today and start getting delivery. Use the link down below and start ordering today. All right, and we are back and talking about more Libra stuff. So I think that when most people think of the Libra archetype, they think of flirting. Yes. They think of relationships, but like fl flirty, flirty relationships, not like very deep, intense, <laughs> like Scorpio stuff. Well, you're married. Yes, I am. Recently married too. Yes, within the last year. So let's talk about the synastry between you and your husband. Yes. So both my husband and I have what I affectionately refer to as nightmare birth charts. So... I have five Leo placements and he has about the same number of Aquarius placements. So our synastry is very sister sign. Um, synastry is interesting, but I think my favorite aspects of ours are we both have air moons. He's an Aquarius moon. Uh, we both have Leo risings. 
And then our Mercuries are in sister signs as well. And then I actually have a lot of my asteroids, my romantic asteroids like Juno and Vesta in the sixth house of Capricorn. And that's where his other stellium is. So he has a Capricorn Venus, yeah! he has a Capricorn Mars. Hey. So it's definitely like, like when we talk, it's all very fire and air energy, but romantically and like our long-term relationship goals, it's very much homebody. Uh, so we're kind of like the couple that's like really fun when we're out together, but we would rather spend a Saturday night. In. It's interesting because I know that your husband has a very similar chart to my boyfriend. Yes. Lots of Aquarius and Capricorn. And I think water sign energy needs that. Yes, the structure, but the variety to not get too bored. And I think I also just like how rebellious Aquarius energy is. It kind of uh, softens the Capricorn a bit, I think, loosens it up a little. So I'm a big fan of both of those signs, obviously. Same here. I love, I mean, I have a Capricorn stellium. Yeah. As well as Scorpio stellium. So I'm just really friggin' intense. And I know that my boyfriend evens me out a lot. One of your videos went viral about like uh, who gets up the mountain. And yeah, where the mountain analogy. Yeah. So yeah. Aquarius is very, they're very philosophical. They really want to know why we're doing something the way we're doing it. Um, they really take their time seeing the full picture before deciding how they want to subvert something versus Capricorn is like, I want to get to on the top of the mountain and they just go straight ahead. Um, yeah. Both have the stubbornness of Saturn. It's just the approach is so different. So it's really cool yeah. to see it in one person. Yeah, it is actually. And I love that I know enough about astrology to be able to view people in that like romanticized lens of like, wow, you're really your archetype right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so hard whenever my husband's like, oh, something else is going on. It's hard for me to not be like, well, I could tell you what's going on. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I know something you don't. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, I mean, how did you guys meet? So we met through friends, the old fashioned way. Uh, IRL. Yes, we texted for a really long time and had this like pokey fun flirtation. And then he asked me on a real date, took me out. We did the whole official thing. And then he was like, do you want to be my girlfriend? That's the Capricorn Venus. He was like, lock it down. <laughs> we did one date, liked it and was like, okay, we're good to go. So yeah, it definitely had the Aquarius kind of like aloof, trying to play it cool early on. But the commitment is definitely Capricorn Venus through and through. It's very much like, let's do it right. Let's do it in order. Let's do it like ring on the finger. Let's get the house, the dogs, the whole shebang. So yeah, my my boyfriend is an Aquarius and Cap Venus. And that's yep. exactly the energy. It's such a good energy too. Because it's like, it they really don't want to put people around. And that's the thing is, it's like, they'll keep it interesting, but they're not going to keep it aloof you know you know where you stand even if they like to aggravate you sometimes you know what I mean yes <laughs> <laughs> yes I do do you have like a worst first date experience you want to share the worst sign that I like have a story about when I was in college I was very deeply interested in a Sagittarius man <gasps> we all make mistakes and so for about two years, I got really, really into the improv comedy scene. <gasps> and I want to be very clear. I was not doing improv comedy. I would exclusively just go to improv comedy shows and laugh at how funny his jokes were. And to be fair and to his credit, he is and was very, very funny. Mm. But I met a lot of unfunny people during that whole process. And looking back, I'm like, dang, I always just went to his shows. Like I was stroking his ego. And I'm wondering why are these Sagittarius is so it's because we literally, we gas them up. I kind of did and, that one to myself. Well, no one will hype you harder than a cancer. Yes. And I have all those Leo placements. So I'm a clown. So I'm always in the crowd like, ooh, ooh, ooh. it was. <laughs> I dated, um, he was a double Aquarius and he did stand up. And there's nothing more painful than watching someone that you're even remotely interested in bomb. Yes. It's so hard. It's and then so they come hard. back and you're like, <laughs> the, the water sign in you did great, sweetie. That's so good. <laughs> <Until> next time. <laughs> <laughs> we all fall down sometimes. Yeah, exactly. The worst first date that I ever went on because I was a serial Tinderer. I yes. loved man shopping. It was my favorite. And I mean, I don't know if you're kind of broke, you can just go get a free meal. 
it's <laughs> I used to love using Tinder. I met my boyfriend IRL though. So there is something for that. Yes. But this guy that I swiped on, he was fine. We talked on the phone. He didn't have too many red flags I could notice. Although it was years ago when I was, before I was healing. Right. So we don't really notice red flags. Yeah. You're like, oh, someone wants to go out. Yeah. So we went to this restaurant and I ordered a glass of wine and he got a, a water. I'm like, okay, fine. Um, and then he proceeded to order with the waitress by nickel and diming her about the burger he wanted. He was like, if I take off the lettuce, can you take off some money for that? And I was like, oh God. Like a whole 25 cents, buddy. So that's how it started. And then we go further and I'm like, just like, all right, whatever. Just drink your wine. That's fine. Yeah. You're like, I've already that, got a Pinot. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I'm just going to chill on this. And then this man launches into how he very recently was in a tantric sex cult <gasps> and his last relationship was with one of the like higher up people and I left after that. yeah yeah <laughs> that's when you start chugging the wine yep <laughs> I was like I I was like this is not real life There's is this a no Taurus with, what was their sign Okay. So I didn't even know, honestly, I think that I asked in the beginning, but I, it was so traumatic for me that I was like, doesn't even matter. Yeah. I'm not even going <laughs> to let, let a sign have that kind of like undignified <laughs> archetype. I have like, this man was a nightmare. <laughs> You're like, this guy has his own thing going on. <laughs> that's no sign's fault. That is yep. <laughs> all him. So that's generally what I think of when I think of Libras. Right. And I think I just think of people in that context anyways, because I said this last episode, but I also love that Libra is very much like fine art yes people also forget the venus influence libra kind of gets the short end of the stick they really don't get the representation as a cardinal sign taurus kind of overshadows them in the venus aspect Woo! at least in the content i see being made and i think it is because the balance of libra it's so refined and elegant it almost is understated it, it doesn't have the same flash thing that a fire sign thing does but it's almost the level of detail you would expect from like a Virgo on how meticulous and how detail oriented they are about the few things that they really find this joy in. And so I think that's why Libras really need to focus on balance and focus on like prioritizing themselves because they put all this beauty out in the world, but you need to make sure it gets appreciated by the right people. When I think of the Libra archetype, I think an art curation at a, a swanky Soho spot. Yes. It's like super highbrow, high as Very new. Yes. Yeah. Very trendy. And I vibe with that. That's like my whole thing that I like. <laughs> yeah. That Gemini influence in my, in my chart. And then I have all that Leo. I'm an, I lo a lover of the arts. I'm a lover of the creative. And so, but I find myself very influenced by other people. And so those kind of trend trendsetter kind of people, I really admire them. I think that 11th house influence of my moon like you said, kind of positions me more teacher as opposed to curator, which is like, ah, I don't know. You gotta love it. I, people shit on Virgos all the time too. And I think Virgos are the most meticulous dressers. I mean, like some of the best, most fashionable people. Yes. And it's still getting the short end of the stick. And that's why Libra to me is, um, yeah, it is a very unsung hero because I think that other people probably hinder Libra rather than like looking to them for their own influence and inspiration. I think people see Libra kind of balancing all aspects of their life. And instead of looking at them and saying, how can I replicate that? They try to anchor themselves to it. And they think that Libras have something that they don't. But the reality is, is they're just better at prioritizing and setting boundaries. And because Libras are so receptive of other people and they really do thrive in long-term partnerships, they can get weighed down if they're taking on too much at once. And so it's very weird to have a sign that is so prone to give more than they have, be so heavily associated with romance and love. And, you know, we're talking about the Libra full moon. It's the first one of the astrological new year, right after the Aries new moon. So there are probably a lot of people out there feeling a little tired with dating and all this crap. And so I think that's the message for this is, are you giving more than you're getting back? And if so, is that something you're okay with? Is this preventing you from going where you want to go and doing what you want to do? Yeah, I struggled with codependency for a very long time and kept hopping from like 
a toxic relationship to toxic relationship, looking for someone to give me something Mm -hmm. that they were never able to. And I feel like that it's, it's just a good message for people in general. Totally. Like, you know, you got to make sure your cup is full. And it needs to be something that you can turn inward for. I think healing culture and all the stuff online too, it goes to one extreme to the other. You have some people who say you have to do it all on your own. And that's not true either. It really is about learning to be at peace with who you are and then finding someone to share that with and then move forward together. And it's hard. It's not easy to do, but it's like being aware of that dynamic and those two possible extremes is like the first step. Because you're never done growing, right? So you're just going to wait till you're perfect to like find someone. No, you have to, you find someone that, that accepts you for where you're at and then hopefully grow together. Exactly. Like I met my husband at 25. I'm 30 now. We're not even the same people five years in. And that's just how relationships work. Any relationship, romantic or otherwise. It should at least, you know, yeah. you want to keep Hopefully, growing. right. Yeah. I mean, I'm 32 now and I look back on my 20s. Every single year of my 20s was pivotal. Like you grow exponentially in your 20s. Yeah. And then, I mean, obviously still in your 30s, 40s, but like in your 20s, you're adulting for the first time and you got to learn. <laughs> oh yeah. Sink or swim. <laughs> and you don't even know how much you don't know till you're drowning. Yep. <laughs> I was really convinced that after I like healed from my really toxic breakup that I was like cured, fixed. I know all, I am omnipotent. I am here to guide you. And then I started my business and I was like, I don't know shit. (laughs) So I had to go back into therapy and be like, okay, let's figure this part of me out. And then I met my boyfriend, still not knowing shit. And (laughs) you just kind of get more, I think you get more humbled. Like, I know there's going to be someone in their early twenties who's going to hear this and you're going to roll your eyes just like I did at 22, but you don't know anything in your twenties. And I'm sure there's someone in their forties listening to us being like, wait, (laughs) I think that's the message of life is like, just be confident in the choices you're making, but be mindful that there's so much that just pure experience and being alive will give you. Um, Yeah. Some lessons you can only learn by screwing up enough times. And so like, definitely be confident that you know where you're headed, but don't think you know it all because nobody does. I think the most of the wisdom that I've gained is just from being mindful in my everyday life and presence. And I think that's just something you have to practice over and over again and generally when we're in our 20s especially in capitalistic america we're so busy hunting searching for the next job really you got to like fill all these brackets so we're not mindful until Mm -hmm. we have the maturity to be so i'll ride (laughs) it's hard (laughs) do when you do a love reading for someone like let's say they approach you with a question about how when they're going to find their soulmate or whatever that looks like do you have any certain techniques that you use or placements you really like to look at in their chart Yeah. So you always want to look at things that influence your, your major overall theme. So perfection years and solar return charts can be a great way to start off and say, okay, is this a year of love for you? Or is this a career? Is this a year more of money? Uh, Is this year more about your personal life, et cetera. So just knowing the astrological theme for your year can really give you the lens. And then you're going to want to look at obviously Venus, which is your romance, your attraction, the things you attract in life, as well as the people. Your moon sign is, of course, your emotional center, your intuition. And then I like to look at Mercury and Mars as well, because that shows how you fight, how you communicate. If you're going to have a long-term relationship, you got to be able to have civil discourse with the person you're with. And (laughs) then the romantic asteroids. So Juno and Vesta, things that show you what kind of partner you'll be, what kind of spouse you'll be. And I also like to look at the ones that show what kind of parent you might be because you know people enjoy having children and planning futures. And then you'll always want to look at the houses things are falling in. So um, like moon in the fifth house is great because that shows someone who brings out that natural childlike side of you. Uh, moon in the 12th house for synastry might be a little harder to access, for example. But the, the key with synastry, yep, <laughs> my son's in the 12th house. The key with synastry, though, is like it really is about the complete look. I think, especially with social media, people get worried. They're like, our Venus signs don't match up. I have a Leo Venus. My husband has a Capricorn Venus. That doesn't match on paper. But when you look at our entire dynamic, it plays out in such a way that there's so much more aspect in those placements. It almost doesn't matter. So 
when you're learning about synastry, I really recommend synastry charts or composite charts to kind of show you the energy you have as a couple, where you have natural strength mm. together, and then where you might need to focus more. I really love that breakdown because it is the full view. And also in my kind of thalamic way, we also still have free will. So yeah, they might yes. be challenges, but if that, if that person is very emotionally invested in you, they're going to want to grow with you and work on like how you fight and communicate together exactly. because that was it was a huge block for me and my boyfriend mainly when we were first moving in together because I have had lived by myself for so long and mm -hmm. I didn't realize that I was a skittish little cat that was like don't touch myself don't be like yeah. and <laughs> what, who are you what are you doing yeah it was a really big hurdle and I we worked through it obviously but because mine are Libra I can get really feisty really quickly yeah. even though I'm trying to work diligently. Like I, I'll say all the things in the way they need to be said, but emotion speaks so much louder sometimes. Yeah. It's and like you're so, trying to remain calm, but you're angry crying. Yep. <laughs> exactly. And but I mean, we were both just really invested in making the thing work. And it was like a rough couple months, but we did it. And I always tell people it synastry can only show you potential compatibility people are going to treat you the way they treat you. And that is what you need to be listening to above anything else. How is yeah. someone treating me? Are they being respectful of me? Because that's worth everything. So I used to always get uh, tarot consultations for people. Like people would slide in and try to book a reading with me. So I always have people kind of write a description of what they're going through so I can make sure I'm reading their intention. Mm -hmm. And I'll sometimes and actually mostly when it's relationship readings it's a not good relationship it's I'm the other woman or he cheated on me multiple times or he's a drug addict and I'm trying to save him I'm and I'm just like okay I I don't need tarot cards no yeah do you ever run into stuff, stuff like that with your astrology readings yeah, I, I actually think this is a good topic of conversation. I, I have a few things that I will not do readings on. For example, uh, there are some times where people have contacted me and been like, I've had a terrible year, like my parents have passed away. And at that point, I tell them like, you should really take this money and go talk to some a therapist, I, I think. There is some sort of ethical line as astrologers, we and tarot practitioners and practitioners in general of like, what am I comfortable advising someone on as a spiritual practitioner versus what do I just need to tell you human to human and learning that like sometimes it's not okay to take someone's money. Sometimes they do just need you to say, I, I actually think maybe like you might want to talk to a professional for this. Like this sounds pretty serious. Um, yeah. And that's just something that you have to navigate like personally, but I definitely think it's something that we need to talk about as a community because it is hard. It's hard to make those calls. It really happens in the moment and you have to kind of just decide what you're okay with and what you're not, you know? So I know that I found spirituality and witchcraft again after heartbreak. And I think a lot of people do because you're searching for answers in a chaotic world. Mm -hmm. So magic is really helpful for that. And when I see people that are in that very low state, I'm like, ah, you yeah. might need actual, like, you're right, human to human advice. <laughs> right. But yeah, there's a difference between like, it's been six months, my boyfriend and I, we kind of fight. What's the deal? It's like, okay, well, let's see where you're not linking up communication wise, where you might be bringing in energy. It's such a helpful, like, diagnostic tool to then apply to your relationships. It can't fix everything like you mentioned earlier, but it is kind of a objectively, what am I dealing with here? It is a moral baseline thing. There's nothing more powerful in this world than love and heartbreak. I'm serious. It will drive people to do some of the most nut or butters thing. It is such a powerful force. Let's say I do a reading for somebody who's in a bad spot. I mean, I tell them what's going on in the cards. Yes. I'm advising. Yes. Uh, I'm not sugarcoating. But yes. I do see a lot of like sensational content on TikTok where it's like kind of makes this behavior okay when people don't need to be self-diagnosing, they need to be healing. Obviously, the, the sensationalism fuels the algorithm, but life is really about cycles and ebbs and flows and ups and downs. So of course, you're not always going to get a reading that's like money and fame around the corner, new job. Like, yeah, sometimes you are going to be the girl who breaks up with her boyfriend during retrograde. Like sometimes that is gonna be you. So I think as practitioners, it's about learning to 
deliver the news kindly and impartially and not to say, oh, this is the beginning of the end of your relationship and it's all downhill and you're, but to be more like, hey, it's going to be a bit of a rough patch communication wise. You might have some uncomfortable conversations. Like here's what the topic might be about. Here's where, what you can expect to come up. And maybe some people find that boring. Maybe that's why those kind of videos don't go viral. But I think in the long run, it's a more realistic daily view of astrology. Like the more you learn about astrology, the more it is a bit mundane. It's kind of like the weather, honestly. Yeah. And honestly, if you're leading as the reader from that place and you're trying to guide people in a way that's helpful to them, where it's like, okay, yeah, these conversations might be coming up. How do you feel about that? What are your feelings around it? Have you processed those feelings? Mm -hmm. Are you not communicating those feelings with your partner? Those are all very tangible, helpful things. But yeah, they do seem a little boring because it's, yeah, you're not, it's not like, oh, um, I don't know who's hot right now. Bradley Timothy Cooper. Chalamet. I don't Timothy know. Chalamet. Oh, why is that? <laughs> oh wait, no, Bradley? no, wait. Tom Holland's pretty hot right now because of okay. the Spider-Man movie. Oh, Robert okay. Pattinson because of the He's new hot. Batman. Yes, apparently okay. that one's really good. Okay, Robert Pattinson. Uh, you're not always going to get like, oh, Robert Pattinson's knocking on your door hey. today. Like people right. really expect that from like they gave us too much credit. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, and I'm like, that's the thing. It's like to be honest, a lot of this is like it is very mundane. It's not every day you're going to read someone's chart or read someone's cards and be like, oh my gosh, like this is a superstar in the movie. <gasps> that would be really cool. We'd probably both make a lot more money if that were how it worked, but. Yeah, the reality is it's more about teaching and guidance and empowering people to take what they learn and like continue that self-study and like grow in their own spiritual path. Because only you know what you're dealing with. You know, only you really know what's in your heart. And so it's about applying that information with your internal self, you know? Which is hard work. It is. And it doesn't and get easier. It no. just gets, I don't know. More, it gets more boring, mundane, routine in a good way. Like you get used to just always reflecting, reflecting and kind of processing, processing and, thinking. and thinking. I remember when I first found out uh, what boundaries were and what feelings were. And it was so <laughs> tedious to be like, what am I feeling right now? Instead of, because Scorp I, mean, I don't think Scorpio is very good at dealing with feelings anyways. <laughs> but I also have OCD, which is a actual neurodivergent like right. control issue. So I, I was like, feelings, what? Ugh. And then do I have to feel my feelings every second of every day? And it right, just it's felt, like, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> like it just felt like vertigo, like that Alfred Hitchcock movie where I was like, oh my God. Yep. Uh, but yeah, once you start practicing that, you're able to access it more easily and it becomes mundane in the fun way where you could be like, oh no, I already know what's up. And that's what strengthens your intuition. Yes. And then it becomes easier to deal with in the moment because you kind of have prepared yourself to recognize those things as they occur for you. My eye therapist calls it riding the wave. Like you learn to just ride the waves and they just feel smaller every time. So. Yep. My therapist calls it that too. I love analogies. They help Same. my brain so much. I'm such a visual person. Same. So I'm like, oh yeah. Oh, I'm sad. Mm -hmm. I can ride this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and we're both water signs. So I'm like, oh, I understand. I love the water. Perfect. Water. <laughs> okay. So uh, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to play a game. Do you want to know what this game is? Um, I think I'd like to be surprised. Okay. All right. Well, stay tuned. Did you know I was a triple Scorpio? If not, you've probably never heard of me or you've been living under a rock for the past 32 years. But now I'll never have to worry about who I need to brag to again because of my beautiful print from Oracle's Haven. Oracle's Haven is an online witchy retailer that has incredibly beautiful products like this print and my favorite robe. You can get 15% off of your entire order today at theoraclescaven.com if you use code witchy. Tell them I sent you. Are you depressed with no astrological weather to blame it on? Are you anxious and it's f***ing up your spell work? Do you just plain feel like you're spinning out of control? It's not your fault. Even witches deal with mental health issues. And that's why I'm offering a free week to BetterHelp.com. BetterHelp is an online counseling platform that provides text, call, and video chat so you can meet with your counselors and discuss your problems daily 
weekly or whenever you feel like you need to. And if you struggle with depression like your favorite triple Scorpio, that's a lot. So go easy on yourself and sign up for a free week today at betterhelp.com slash witchy. All right, everybody, and we're back for our final segment, and we are going to be playing Smasher Pass with certain placements. So I have the signs in one hat, and then I have planet slash placements in the other. And as I pull out the combo, you're going to tell me Smasher Pass. Excellent. First things first. Okay, we have a Lilith. Okay. Ooh, starting off scary. <laughs> starting off very scary. Uh, Capricorn Lilith. Smash. <laughs> that was so fast. Okay. But, I mean, will I regret it? Maybe. Yeah, will it be fun? Smash. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. believe in I believe in Capricorn rights and wrongs. I'm a Capricorn apologist. I love them. <laughs> also, Capricorn Lilith is such zaddy, like 50 shades of gray energy. Like I'm not mad at it. <laughs> no, no. Okay. So now, okay, we have a moon. Ooh, okay. And Sagittarius. Smash. Smash. Yeah. But it would have to be knowing that they wouldn't call me back. I would have to emotionally prepare for that. <laughs> I think that's smart. Knowing what you're getting involved in, but knowing yes. it's going to be fun. Yes, exactly. Okay. Let's shake my hat. <laughs> ah, Venus. Oh, okay. And Taurus. Ooh, this is going to be controversial, but I'm going to pass. Um, really? I have a Leo Venus, so I have to be the center of attention. So, <laughs> well, she comes by it honestly. I'm also too impatient. They like to play the waiting game. They very much are the Casanovas. They like to take it slow. And I'm like, do you like me or do you not like me? Like, let's go. <laughs> right, right. Well, and I'm like, are they, are they Casanovas or are they just stoned? and forget so let's do okay rising okay this would be a good one i want to get right in the bottom libra Ooh. how apt for this episode. i was gonna say um i think i'd smash i would be worried that i would be wanting to impress them though because i have a leo rising so it's a question of if they would smash reciprocally <laughs> They might be annoyed like, by the little clown energy, like, oh. <laughs> do you want to smash? Is the yeah. question. <laughs> okay. okay, so Mars. Okay. Uh, oh, Leo Mars. I'm going to pass. I have a Leo Mars. It would be a cat fight. <laughs> do you see how this is so helpful? <laughs> I know myself. I know yep. it's not going to work. Yep. <laughs> time not wasted i'm gonna pull a sign first this time oh okay uh pisces Ooh. mercury pass i love you girlies but no <laughs> like what are you what are you saying <laughs> i know and i'm just like so again i'm like so <laughs> did you ever see true blood Yes. Oh my gosh. Like years ago when it first came out. One of my favorite shows ever. I think I've seen it like four times over, but there's this one point where Sookie is uh, going into this like fairy place. And there's this like very beautiful, tall black woman who's just, she's incredible looking, but she's a, like too old of a fairy. Okay. Like she, she just has way too much knowledge. So everything she says is just like disjointed and just like nothing makes sense and you can't gotcha. keep focus. And that is fully Pisces Mercury energy to me. <laughs> yes, yes. It's like, they're literally speaking gibberish most of the time, but then like every once in a while, they literally prophesy. They literally yes. just like know things. And yes. you're like, what the heck? Exactly. But that's what I'm saying. Like that, that woman is exactly Pisces Mercury energy. Yep. Cause she was so like, she was deep as hell, but you couldn't like you can't I'm like I must be just be too stupid to understand this that's what I <laughs> yeah I'm not I have not ascended okay let's do one more oh got another Gemini oh okay hmm. sun yes 
Yeah. Yeah. Because that would be trying my moon and I don't know if it would last a long time, but it would certainly be a fun as hell relationship. So smash for sure. I, I like Gemini energy. Gemini and Scorpio are a very underrated duo. They are devious together. It's fun. People are lucky they don't get along more often because they could take over the world together. You got a little, yeah. a little mad scientist and then someone who could actually execute, like we'd be in trouble. Yeah. I had a best friend who was a Gemini. She's still a Gemini, but we're not best friends, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is common. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, all right. Yay. Thank you for playing. Yay. All right. So that's going to conclude our show for the day. Can you tell everybody where they can find you and connect with you? Yes. So on every social platform, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram at Lauren Ash Astro. And then laurenashastro.com is my astrology website where you can go and find daily astrology blog posts and just keep up with what I'm doing. So thanks for having me on. Yay. Oh, it was my pleasure. I hope to have you on again. Yes. Maybe we could talk Saturn returns. That'd be kind of fun. I think it would be kind of fun. Ooh. All right. Well, that's our show, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.